This is Beneteau's brand new Oceanus 60, and it is huge. It has a 17-foot beam, and you really sense that all the way through this and the amount of space that it gives you. So we're going to go on board and do the full tour, but not before having a look down here where the garage is, because this will actually take a Williams mini jet. <laughs> Check that out. That is pretty impressive on a 60-foot sailing boat. And of course, this transom then folds up, the steps go up with it, and that closes that off. So the first thing to greet us is the cockpit. Now they have designed this boat very much along the lines of that an experienced couple should be able to handle this on their own. You don't need a crew. You can, of course, have a crew if you want, but the idea is that for a family or for a couple that want to do some serious cruising, they can manage this. And that is why you've got things like, for example, all the lines leading aft. So the winches are back here. These are power winches. You've got the helm right back here as well. Again, great, the family and friends, people can sit up around this area, whoever's home in the boat can control it from here, they can talk to the people here. It's the sort of thing that can be managed very easily. There are two helms, as you can see, and the reason for that is because as the boat sails and it heels over, so imagine the wind is on this side, the boat's heeling that way, this side is up, the sails are on that side, you can look past everything and get a really good view. Of course, when you tack and it's going the other way, so it's heeled that way, the wind is on that side, you sail it from there. They've configured these, so this one, when you're manoeuvring the boat in harbour, has the engine control and the bow and stern thruster controls. You've got a multifunction display on here as well, of course. And then this one is perhaps a bit more with the sailing in mind, so you don't get the engine controls, you get the multifunction display. But then you also get things like the autopilot on this side as well. So they ha there is a slight bias for manoeuvring and for sailing, but ultimately, when you're out at sea, you use whichever is most appropriate, depending on how you're sailing the boat. There's a hard top on here. You can see this comes all the way back, but this section here will roll forward. You can see how it constantly is up. If you want this open, you can have it. You slide it back if you want the shade. And then here, what they've done is made this multi-adaptable. So what you see here with the table, this will fold out, of course. So if you're dining, you can get a lot more space there. That one does the same. But these are height adjustable. And the idea is that you can turn this into this and likewise you can turn this into this and then if we go on forward again you can see they put more lounging areas to where maggie's taking it easy up there the whole point of this is just to be a really comfortable place you, know, you have this down in the med and you spend your summer on it you just want loads of space to lounge about but also to have the capability to do some serious sailing when you want to we're going to head inside first of all i think this is where you really feel this 17 foot plus beam because well check this out Look at that. That is just huge, isn't it? All light colours. It feels very spacious in here. And what they've done is they've brought windows right the way down. So you've got the windows up here, as you'd expect. We've got the blind down on this one, so you can have these down if you want to. They just drop down like so. And you've got opening sections as well. But also you've got windows down here. So when you're sat down and you've not got boats alongside you, of course, you've got the view out. We've got chart area here. We've got the multifunction display is repeated down here as well, so you can monitor that. We've got TV that powers up from here. And if we spin on round, then there's another really nice dining area, social area. Use it however you will. Also, the control panel for the boat is here, which doesn't appear to be on at the moment. Hang on. Hey, there we go. <laughs> and this gets you into things like uh, bilge pumps and um, power uh, management. All that kind of stuff is on there. And just as a neat little touch, you see how the boat's pointed like that, you can angle it. Hang on, get a finger on it. There we go. <laughs> Wonderful. So yeah, great social area here, and then the galley is forward. So it's one step down. And that allows you to wedge yourself in there. And then you've got, obviously, a ton of storage you'd expect on a boat of this size. So this is all, not going to open it all, but you get the idea like this all the way along. You've got the gimbaled cooker, you've got your dishwasher. So you've got all of the mod cons. And there must be a fridge somewhere. Yes, there is. <laughs> See, can you shall find it's over on this side. There we go. So you've got the fridge here. You've got the freezer down underneath, a load more storage here. That one there is another freezer. I mean, it does have some serious legs, this boat, obviously being a big sailing boat, so you want plenty of cold storage, and you also want a wine cooler. And there it is. Now, if we head forward, this is a really interesting layout, the way they've done this forward cabin, because normally in a sailboat, what you get is a double bed up there in the bow, 
like this. With this one, what they've done is they've matched the shape of the boat and have the bed facing forward. And that makes total sense when you think about it because with the whole sides coming in like this and then you've got the bed, obviously you want the widest bit where your shoulders are and then tapering and that then fits perfectly. And it gives you a feeling of a much larger boat because that's the sort of thing you'd normally find on a 70 or 80 foot boat, not on a 60 foot boat. This is all storage along here. Again, I won't open it all, but just to give you a flavor. You've got stuff like this, so a ton of space to put things away. We've got hanging there. Safe is in there as well. More drawers here. Just a lot of space, which is, again, exactly what you want in this kind of boat. And also a lot of light in here. Look at all these hatches up above. So a lot of light and a lot of ventilation into this area. These all open and these are bug screens, so you can pull that across like that, or you can have a night screen, he says. Yes, you can. <laughs> there we go, like so. So that is the owner's cabin. Some nice lighting details around the place as well. They've really tried to up the ambience in here. I think that works well. It's an ensuite cabin. Of course, that's back here. And again, a decent size. You've got the sink, you've got your loo, and then you've got a separate shower area just over there. Shelving in behind there. and the magic Bernardo doors that have no catches. They just appear magnetically once you close. So that stays like that. Once you open it, it disappears. Cunning, huh? Okay, let's head on back. Light switches, air conditioning controls, all that kind of stuff. Again, that sense of beam when you come out of here is fantastic. If we head on aft, there are two cabins back here, one on either side. If we head back this way, this is what these look like. Now you need to remember, of course, that tender garage is here. So that is why these are perhaps, you know, you might wonder why they don't extend that a little bit further. That's because if you want to tender in here, you can see in fact how it shapes in through there. That's why that is like that. Engine is up here as well. I'll show you that in a moment. But a decent sized cabin, a decent double bed, uh, and again, plenty of light and ventilation because a little opening window here, but a bigger one that goes out into the cockpit on this side blinds that come down across those. What else have we got in here? We have got, well, storage of course, so big hanging locker in there for example, that kind of stuff. And we've also got an ensuite and quite a nice one because your loo is there, your sink is there and the shower is there. And if we loop around the other side, past the navigation station, then we've got this. So very similar deal, except for the fact, I think I'm right in saying this can be two singles. Looking at this underneath here, I would say with some confidence, that's all the idea of that. So two singles or a double, there's an infill section in the center and I'm messing up the bedding like a good nun. So let's pretend that never happened. Uh, storage again about the place. So you've got drawers underneath here. You've got your hanging locker up here and so forth. Now this one, the door is here and then the heads is here because this is a day head so clearly you want one loo that people can come and use without going into a cabin and that is it. So at night this would be for that cabin during the day. It's a day head. Fantastic. There we go. And a little wave in the mirror and a little look at the... That must open, mustn't it? Ah, uh, yes it does. Hang on. There we go. Emergency loo roll. Fantastic. Okay, a couple of other little things to show you here, and then we'll go and take a wander around the deck. Um, you've got access in here to engineering spaces, which is very good. So if there's any maintenance needs doing, then plumbing, wiring, all that kind of thing. You've got places like this that'll get you into that. So you can see some of the uh, plumbing and uh, electrics and so forth, all nice and get at -able. And the engine access then is underneath here. And that is a 170 horsepower Yanma diesel. And in fact, you'll notice that there's a little access thing there so that you can get in from the side and get to the back of it if you need to. But yeah, it's a pretty substantial engine. Of course, it's really an auxiliary in as much as that's to get you out of the harbour. And then the idea is that you sail. But with that much power, if you do need to motor to get somewhere, that'll do it. All right, let's drop that back. I think that's the interior, fairly comprehensively covered. Let's go and have a look around the deck. So we'll come back through here, loop our way around past one of the helm stations. In fact, let's go right around the back. 
and then head forward. Now there are a couple of choices here. Um, you can have either slab reefing or you can have in-mast furling, which this has got. The in-mast furling is by far the most popular because people want these things to be as easy as possible. And in fact, there's another option on the keel. You can have a standard keel or a deep keel. A deep keel saves a bit of weight. And if you're doing some serious you know, offshore stuff, that might be what you want, but the standard keel is a little shorter and therefore gives you a bit shallower draft. And that, again, is probably a little bit more popular. If we come right up to the bow, sunbathing cushions on this one. Again, it's all about relaxing when you're not actually sailing. It's a self-tacking foresail. That's what that track there is for. And the foresail, again, roller furling, again, designed to keep life as easy and as simple on possi as possible on possible <laughs> as possible on board or on possible as board depending on how drunk you are and then that is the rig pretty substantial isn't it but that is i think a pretty cool looking sailing boat there we go that's the hatch over the um Actually, that's not over the forward cabin, is it? Let's have a look in there. There we go. Ah! Now, I mentioned crew. I didn't know this was here. <laughs> I had looked under earlier and missed it completely. Let's have a little look. You can share the experience with me. This is a little crew cabin. We've got a bed in here. There's a bit full of gear at the minute. This might be why they didn't show it to me, but you've also got little heads in here and a shower. Pulls out of there. That's very nifty, isn't it? So if you were doing a longer sail, you did want to take somebody who wants their own space, well then, that's ideal for that, isn't it? Brilliant, okay, that's good. I'm glad we found that. There we go, let's drop that one back down. And that now, I think, is a pretty comprehensive tour of the Berto Oceana 60. I am gonna stop there. I'm gonna say massive thanks to Berto for organizing that. They closed the entire boat down in the middle of a boat show for me to film it, so that's really great. Huge thanks to you guys for watching. Let me know what you think in the comments. And we'll catch you on another one of these real soon. Take care, bye-bye.